Hey Baldwins, I'm Lucy and this is Pussy Powered. Today's video was inspired by a question from a queen in the audience. She asked, Do you have any videos that talk about feeling turned off after orgasm? One of the pressure points for me in having intercourse is that after I orgasm, I want my husband to get the hell off me. Do you have any content that talks about this specifically? This feeling that my body needs to shut down after I orgasm? Thank you for sharing this question. Post-orgasmic moments can be some of the most beautiful, euphoric, connecting, blissful moments, alone or with a partner. But so many women and don't experience it this way. You're definitely not alone in experiencing these kinds of post-orgasm sensations. In fact, personally, for the first eight to nine years of marriage, I experienced the same thing. For starters, it took so many mental gymnastics for me to get off, fantasizing certain scenarios and then switching scenes in my head while my husband was going down on me, that it took me much longer to orgasm than it does now, and with much more intense stimulation. So the moment that the orgasm would begin to happen, I would instinctually push my husband off of me because what just felt pleasurable all of a sudden felt painful. Then after giving birth to our third daughter and experiencing trauma to my clit externally, we had to dial down the intensity quite a bit and get creative about different kinds of stimulation. Over the years, using the mindset practices and the self-pleasure practices that I now get to share with you, a whole new world of sexual pleasure has opened up for me and for my sex life, where now I frequently have G-spot, A-spot, and cervical orgasm in addition to or combination with clit orgasms. But before we explore some ways you can open up your world of sexual pleasure, let's explore some common reasons on why this uncomfortable phenomenon happens after orgasm. Potential reason number one, overstimulated clit. If you're using clitoral stimulation to orgasm. While women typically have a shorter refractory period than men do post-orgasm, much of it depends on what it took to get to that first orgasm. But hold up, before we move on, what is a refractory period? The new Oxford American Dictionary defines a refractory period as a period immediately following stimulation during which a nerve or muscle is unresponsive to further stimulation. So especially if you're using external clitoral stimulation on the tip which is super sensitive to come unless your body is used to continuing stimulation on or around the clit, it may even begin to feel painful to continue stimulation, just like it did for me. The second potential reason is post-orgasm clarity, more commonly known as post-nut clarity or post-nut brain. So before you orgasm, your brain becomes hyper-focused as multiple hormones and neurotransmitters rush in and build up, causing a kind of a brain fog that gives you tunnel vision with one goal in mind, orgasmic release. After you orgasm, the post-nut clarity begins to set in. So what exactly is post-nut clarity? Well, the Urban Dictionary defines it as immediate clear-mindedness or soberness an individual gains after orgasming. Not everyone experiences this post-nut clarity and not everyone experiences it every time they have an orgasm. But for those who do, once you have an orgasm and you experience that dopamine and endorphin rush, your mind is able to refocus on whatever issue you were previously dealing with. So basically, once your sexual need and release is met, your brain power is freed up to think about other things and perhaps to notice emotions that have been repressed that are now surfacing. Which leads me to possibility number three, emerging feelings of sexual shame. Sometimes when this happens, deeper emotions that you don't typically access in everyday normal activities begin to surface. You may notice feelings of resistance, guilt, or shame around receiving pleasure. You may feel the fear of not being enough creep up. You may feel guilty for wanting more out of the sexual experience than you just had, which by the way, greed and selfishness are really powerful aspects of the sexual shadow to explore and integrate. All of which can lead your mind to unconsciously shut down your body's response to pleasure. Or you may not even be clear on what is surfacing emotionally, but your body feels it. Your body is wise. Your body remembers even when your mind does not. So for whatever unconscious, subconscious reason, your body immediately shuts down the pleasure. Okay, so this is by no means an exhaustive list of all of the possible reasons that you're experiencing what you're experiencing, but it's a good starting point to begin to dig deeper. So now, next, what can you do about it? The first thing you can do is nothing. If this isn't a problem for you and it isn't a problem for your partner, then you may just consider leaving it alone. Keep doing what you're doing and simply stop the sexual stimulation or the sexual experience altogether 
after you orgasm. However, if you're watching this video, that probably won't quite cut it for you. So here are a couple other options you may want to consider. The second thing you can do is to take time to feel through it physically and emotionally. Talk with your partner ahead of time about either pausing right after you orgasm, creating space and time for the emotions and energy to flow, which could manifest as crying, shaking, laughing, even something as simple as a long audible sigh, or creating space for this to happen after you're both totally done with sex. This can be such a powerful bonding experience, which reminds me, I've got to do a video on sexual aftercare because it's not just for kink. You may also consider keeping a sex journal where you write down what feelings came up during sex, what sensations you felt, what emotions emerged, how your body responded, what new things you tried, and anything else that you might wanna make note of. The third thing you can do is begin a self-pleasure practice. My self-pleasure practice was an absolutely fundamental part of my sexual expansion. Not as a replacement to sex, but as a complement to it. That right there is something that a lot of people tend to misunderstand. For me, sometimes that practice is hot, fast, and wild, but for the most part, it's slow, sensual, nurturing, and quite meditative. In fact, I get some of my most inspired ideas and emotional breakthroughs during my self-pleasure sessions. So if you're ready to begin a self-pleasure practice, Practice, here are some key things to keep in mind. Show up to your self-pleasure ritual without any pressure to orgasm. And while you're self-pleasuring, notice what thoughts, feelings, and beliefs emerge and how your body responds to different kinds of stimulation. Release the assumption that every orgasm will feel or look the same way. To receive pleasure more openly and in different ways without hard set expectations. Also, allow yourself time to just breathe into your body and be fully present with your body after each self-pleasure session and especially after each orgasm. Envision the energy circulating in and through and around your body, noticing any emotions that are bubbling up. And during this time, if you feel your legs or your whole body begin to tremble, let it tremble as you keep breathing deeply. And on the exhale, relax your jaw, open your mouth, and release any sounds that are ready to be released. Just because the peak of your orgasm has passed, it does not mean that your body is done releasing. I personally like to take about two to five minutes post-orgasm to do this, although sometimes it can be a little bit longer, especially after sex where there's this shared energy to feel through. Whatever you choose to try or experiment with from this point, I want to acknowledge you for being here, for prioritizing your pleasure, and for being open to ways that you can experience more aliveness, more connection, more pleasure, and more depth in your life. And for those of you queens who are ready to explore more of your pleasure potential, awaken more of your sexual energy, and feel more embodied, more turned on, more alive, more juicy, I invite you to check out my upcoming seven-day Sacred Slut Reclamation. Registration will be closing soon as we begin the program on September 7th. If you're watching this after the program is done or after registration is closed, I encourage you to check out what self-study programs are available at pussypower.me. All right, Wild Ones, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with some friends, and subscribe for more on sexual empowerment and healing for women. In the meantime, here's to your awakening and your pleasure for a pussy-powered life.